Hi, my name's Kim. I am a Chinese medical provider and Taoist practitioner, and this channel is all about you, sharing information and solutions from the ancient Chinese medical cabinet of healing remedies and helping you figure out how to use those remedies in your everyday life. So it's allergy season, and today I am running around Mount Hood because I don't have allergies when I'm in the mountains. I do have them when I'm down on the bottoms where they're growing a lot of grass and I have hay fever. I don't know if you saw my vlog on finding your meditation rhythm, but did you see the first scene when I was walking through that field and those pollen clouds lighting up behind me? That's how the pollen is today. And the cottonwoods are on fire. I was driving the other day and it was like I was driving through a blizzard and I so wanted to stop and film it, but I had forgotten my camera. It's been about 20 years since I've had allergies. And 20 years ago, my allergies were so much worse. And I was taking Allegra. I would step outside and I could feel my head and sinuses instantly swell shut. I'd get a headache and it would feel like I was swimming in cotton. And I'm running around Mount Hood today because I don't have allergies up here in the mountains. The last time I went about eliminating my allergies, it was all based on supplements. I was facing the same situation that I'm facing today. Long-term stress had gotten the best of me. My digestive health was weak and I had gained weight that I just couldn't get off. I was experiencing a lot of inflammation and the allergies were just one more step in the inflammation process. What happens when you have a histamine reaction in the body? The simple response is the body identifies a substance as a foreign invader and the mast cells covered with the correct IgE antibody move to the scene of the crime. And these mast cells attack the invader and start a response to remove the invader from the body. And part of that response is releasing histamine at the site. And histamine causes an inflammation response to help remove the invader from the body. So histamine could cause your sinuses to inflame, your nose to run, or could cause you to sneeze. And these are just three inflammation strategies that your body can use to eliminate a foreign invader. When you're looking for supplements, you're gonna to wanna to look for supplements that support these two strategies. And the first is to reduce the histamine reaction and the second would be to support your overall immune system. All the information here that I'm about to give you is supported by research, and you can find links in the video description below, or you know, click back to the link of my blog and you can find the research information there also. Let's look at five supplements that fit that bill. The first is gonna be the vitamin B3 as nicotinamide. There are two types of vitamin B3. There's niacin and nicotinamide. Okay, so being that this is health and they always like a lot of words, I'm gonna make this even a little crazier because niacin is also known as nicotinic acid and nicotinamide is also known as niacinamide. So the one you're interested in is the one that ends in amide. And that's a supplement you're gonna to wanna to look for. And the research on this supplement has shown that if taken internally, it reduces symptoms of bronchial asthma. Nicotinamide has been reported to reduce asthma and hay fever in people. You can also use B3 nicotinamide topically and it has been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects with acne and reduce signs of aging. The next supplement is vitamin C. And here's the neat thing about vitamin C. The research on the supplement suggests vitamin C is a natural antihistamine. And a research study reported that after taking only two grams of vitamin C, blood histamine levels reduced by almost 40%. 
And the exciting thing about histamine in this study was the study found that excess histamine levels slowed the movement of our immune cells, the ones called neutrophils, to the site of injury. So histamine is a critical messenger molecule in the body, but when we have too much of it, it actually harms the body. When I first managed my allergies with supplements, vitamin C was the last supplement I added to my regime, and that was the icing on the cake. I was finally able to eliminate all symptoms of allergies. There is an enzyme in the body that breaks down histamine, and that enzyme is diamine oxidase. So for every enzyme in the body, it needs specific raw materials. And one of the critical elements required for diamine oxidase is B6. So today, there are a lot of common medications that we take that are going to interfere with the function of diamine oxidase because they reduce the amount of B6 in the body. And some of these medicines that can reduce B6 in the body are things like high blood pressure, tuberculosis, asthma, and arthritis medications. Now, other substances can impact the ability of diamine oxidase to function because they encourage the body to release more histamine. And who would have guessed that one of these substances is aspirin? So taking aspirin actually encourages the body to release more histamine. Now, another way that diamine oxidase is impacted is that some of our diseases, some of our chronic inflammatory concerns like IBS release more histamine into the digestive tract. And then lastly, things that can impact vitamin B6 can be things that we consume on a daily basis like alcohol. And being that B6 is water soluble, we don't store it in the body. If you're not using supplements, then B6 is going to be completely dependent on your food choices. Our food processing has impacted the nutritional contents of foods, and we know that, but we don't really think of our food processing as additive. So using nitrogen fertilizers instead of nutrient-rich soils reduces the nutritional value of food. And using sterilization methods such as heat, irradiation, or pasteurization, all of that reduces the nutritional value of food. Shelf life reduces nutrient content, cooking reduces nutrient content, and when we start to look at it this way, the numbers look different. If each loss was only 2%, we might say that by the time we get the food to the table, we've lost 10% of the nutritional value, and that's okay. But that's not what's happening. Some of these processes can eliminate up to 50% of the nutrition in the food, and that's where supplementing becomes effective. There are a number of companies that make diamine oxidase from pork kidneys, and diamine oxidase is a digestive enzyme. It's produced naturally in the body, in your kidneys, your thymus, or your intestinal lining. So supplementing with diamine oxidase is not gonna reduce the amount that's made in your body naturally, nor is it gonna reduce the amount of histamine that's made in your body. What supplementing with diamine oxidase is gonna do is give you more of this enzyme to help break down the histamine that your body's naturally producing. This supplement is taken for food sensitivities and that's gonna be foods that you think don't work well in your system. And those are gonna be foods that cause gas, bloating, diarrhea, heartburn, upset stomach, and okay, and so then the thought is, well, if I'm taking diamine oxidase, why do I need to take B6? Well, you need to take B6 because B6 is needed for more than just diamine oxidase. And if you're low on diamine oxidase because you're lacking B6, well, then all those other functions that need B6 are also going to be impaired. And what are some of those other functions? Well, B6 is needed for creating the neurotransmitter serotonin in the brain. It's needed to support the central nervous system. 
and it also helps create the myelin sheath, which encases the nerve. Okay, so what's another supplement? Calcium. Calcium is a critical component of liver function. It regulates almost every liver task we know of. And many of us learned the liver is responsible for detoxing the body. Well, low calcium levels in the liver can dysregulate critical functions, including bile acid secretion. Problems with bile acid secretion can aggravate IBS and reduce the effectiveness of your digestion. And we've already seen inflammation in the digestive tract increases histamine levels. Stress reduces the amount of calcium stored in the body and can deplete calcium over time. So low calcium levels increase your stress, increase your irritability, increase agitation, and increase anxiety. You can use Chinese herbs and supplements in a similar manner. They both boost the immune system. Now, the one thing that you have to be conscious of is that you're repairing your health. You're not trying to suppress a symptom. So if you're trying to suppress a symptom, then go find a pill from your doctor. And usually you can take that and it'll suppress the symptoms within a day and or a week or three weeks. It depends on what they say their loading time is. And that's not what Chinese herbs and supplements do. What they do is they try to repair your body so that your body gets back to normally defending you. So you might have to take these supplements and these herbs for a number of years in order to repair your body to the point where you don't need to take them anymore or you only need to take them sporadically. The first time I addressed my allergies with natural supplements, it took me three years of supplementation. And then, you know, I haven't taken supplements in 20 years. And the other thing that you have to be conscious of is that you're not going to take a small amount of supplements. You're not going to take a small amount of herbs. You're going to take a lot. So when I was doing this the first time, I was doing supplements and, and some herbs. And I was taking 1,200 milligrams of calcium. I was taking 600 milligrams of vitamin uh, of magnesium and my vitamin Bs were significantly over the RDA. I think my B12 was 2000 times the RDA. And then my vitamin C, I was taking two grams. Sometimes when I had a really bad flare up, I would even step it up to 10 grams. So it wasn't that I was taking a minor amount and I did this for three, three years. This time, what I did is being that I specialize in Chinese herbs, I started out with the Chinese herbs because I know that they, they act immediately. If you get the right formula, they act quickly and are very effective. And even with that, just to put, to put this into perspective, working with your practitioner, it's probably going to take them a couple tries to get the right formula for you. But if you get the right formula, it's pretty amazing. And it took me a couple tries and I live with myself. So I know myself and it still took me a couple tries to get the right formula for me. But what happened when I got the right formula, it turned out that I had to use two formulas and how it would work for me is I was actually taking one of those formulas six times a day and the other one I was taking two to three times a day. So what would happen is I take my formula and then my symptoms would go away. And then as soon as I felt something coming back, like scratchy throat, scratchy eyes, I would take my formula again. Chinese herbs build up over time. So the longer you're taking them, the more they build up in your system. So at the end of the second week, you know, I was able to step it down to four times a day and the other formula I was still taking twice a day. And then by the end of the first month, I was down to taking the one, one of them for twice a day and the other one only once a day. And I did that for about another month. And now I take one of those, well, I take both of those formulas maybe once every two, three days. And then I incorporated supplements just recently because 
now now I'm okay with going for a longer term solution, but oh, the pollen and hay fever this year was horrible and I needed an immediate fix. So now I'm taking supplements and these are working just great. And I haven't had any major issues in, you know, over this last three months. Okay guys, that's it. And until next time, I'll catch you on the other side.